Good morning or good afternoon, Palmdale School District, or wherever you are watching this podcast. This is the Palmdale School District Teachers EdTech Podcast number six. And uh, introduce ourselves. I am Steve Stuckey. I am an EdTech coach for Palmdale School District, and I'm a teacher. My name is Dan Hopman. I am an EdTech coach for the Palmdale School District, and I am not an evaluator. I'm Jerry Sloan. I'm an EdTech coach for Palmdale School District, and I help teachers plan and collaborate. And I'm Melissa Shields, and I'm an EdTech coach in the Palmdale School District, and I would love to come co-teach with you and bounce ideas off you. Well, one of the things that we like to do within our, our podcast or video cast here or blog, whichever you want to call it, is that we like to give you some updates. And I know, Jerry, that in our district, we have an incentive for teachers uh, to be Google certified. We do. And we still have a $500 stipend for teachers who get their Google certification level one. And we're excited to have more and more teachers join that, but we have plenty of room left for you. And if you want, if you want to learn more about the Google apps, you can go to apply digital skills and search adult learners. And they've got some classes for you to help. And Dan, also, there's always updates in Google. Google's constantly updating their products based upon user feedback. And I think you have something about Google Classroom. I do. And so let's take a look at Google Classroom. And when you take a look at it the first time, you think, oh, this is the same, no problems. But when you go into create, they've made some minute uh, changes to the way you create assignments, quizzes, and all of that. So as you can see, it used to be everything was housed down here at the bottom. They've moved it over to the right side. And I know it seems, oh, that's not such a huge deal. But I've already gotten multiple calls from teachers going, you know, it used to be right there in the middle and it's gone. Um, but no, they just moved it off to the side. The other thing that they've also added is the idea of the originality reports. Those have gone live for everybody. And so to know more about the originality reports, hit that little I and it'll give you a little bit more about what it is and how to run it. Um, it's a real cool way for you to check whether or not your students are doing original work. So like I said, just a quick update from Google, nothing major, but uh, something to keep an eye out for. I, I really like the idea of the originality reports because it helps curb the copy and paste mentality uh, from let's say Wikipedia into a report that kids are required to do. Absolutely. Uh, besides uh, Google highlights, we have, our own highlights as well. Um, we have a newsletter that as ed tech coaches gets sent out every month and we'd like to uh, take a look and remind you guys about that. Melissa? Okay, so um, on the newsletter this month, we have a mention of Spring Q coming up March 19th through 21st. And there's a link on the newsletter to register for that conference. Um, at the bottom of the newsletter, we have all our upcoming tech trainings, and um, more importantly, uh, the link that Jerry mentioned about the Google One certification is on the newsletter. You just click and there's a link right here. And below that, you'll notice that it says to grow your PLN. Those are all also active links to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right, thank you, Melissa. One of the things that I did see on that newsletter was this information about a PLN. And that's what we wanna talk about. I mean, why not add another acronym for education? Uh, PLN is not to be confused with your PLC. Now, you remember your professional learning communities, that's a formal collaboration uh, between you and a group of educators. You're solving problems of practice, building capacity within each other, helping students perform better. Whereas our PLN, on the other hand, is completely different. It's designed by individuals or groups so that you can grow your own and develop your own professional development plan. Uh, so what do you guys think? You no, know, it's really hard to find professional development that fits you. We've all been in, in PDs before where we sit there and we go, I know this, I've sat through this before. So why not take it into your own hands and go look for what you need? And a PLN, a PLN just sort of does that for you. You get the choice on what you learn. 
Right. A professional, so pro yeah, professional learning network. I'm sorry, Melissa, but I know you do a great job using your Twitter account to really find great ideas and to learn all kinds of things uh, that benefit students in the classroom. Right, and attending several conferences, it, there's the teachers usually use their uh, their Twitter handle or they'll have hashtag links that say hashtag EdChat, something like that. Um, they have uh, regular ed chats, that, what are they called, Twitter chats, that they happen like for a half an hour on a Monday night or a Thursday night. And they're about specific topics that are related to whatever you might be interested in. And you can use the hashtag search um, in Twitter to find what you're specifically looking for, whether it be collaboration or um, long distance uh, collaboration with students across even the country or across the planet. Or even you know, what, science lessons too. Go ahead. Well, yeah. What, what I often think about when we talk about PLNs is uh, our biggest want is to have enough time. And, and luckily these aren't required by any means. You get to go look for things you're interested in, problems that you're looking to solve or skills that you want to develop more. And there's numerous ways to do it. I think Dan, you might actually have a, a couple examples. I do, and it's funny that you say um, the, the, the time factor. And so let me show you, yesterday I was working with a group of teachers in fourth grade that wanted to know about an edu protocol for letter writing. Um, and so I reached out to John Carippo, and uh, who's been in our district uh, a few times speaking. And um, I, you know, I, so I just reached out to him and, and really within minutes, I mean, you take a look at how quickly he responded within 20 minutes. He had ideas for me. He told me who to talk to, and he connected me to others. And so the idea of networking, it's not about getting an idea from one person. It's getting an idea from many. And maybe the one person you're asking doesn't know, but the next one does. And so, you know, we always make the joke about hashtags. So I did a search for a hashtag Eureka Math. And here they are. There's uh, teachers working on different, um, different problems using different methods of Eureka Math. So like this is a using uh, number bonds for the letter seven or thinking maps, different ways of showing a number in, in totally different ways. But these are just at your fingertips. You don't have to sit there and wait for the math professional development or um, a benchmark universe. How are other people using benchmark effectively? You know, and, reach and out to others. It's free. Absolutely free. Sorry. One, of, one of the teacher's no, favorite it's, it's price, free. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the best thing. One of the chats I got in the middle of was, a, was the idea of a Saturday teacher. Um, someone had, had posted, you know, it scares me to be a Saturday teacher. So the idea that you go to a Saturday training and give up your Saturday, but it's the idea that you're using the social media to bring in uh, the PD to you. So I made the point of saying, you know, sometimes I'll take a couple hours while I'm drinking my coffee and go through Twitter, YouTube. It doesn't, you know, it's not about one, you know, sitting down in a training. It's about bringing it to you. It's all about you. One of those things is that you should go and follow some people, whether it's on a, a blog or on Twitter, uh, Facebook. And we even have our own PSD Chromebook Academy Facebook page closed group, but you can reach out if you've been to the Chromebook Academy and join that group to ask those questions and get responses from everybody. I mean, the smartest person in the room is the room, and with PLNs, the room is the world. And really the idea, you know, Steve, you brought up the idea of the PLC, and, you know, it is a community, and even though the, the network is a little bit different than the community, but bringing in the knowledge from the network into the community is always the smart thing to do as well because we don't always all know all the answers. And if you're somebody who doesn't use social media, but perhaps open a Twitter account just for this, we'll come in and help you because it, it is a great way to get those ideas and questions and even better than teachers pay teachers. And can I just say for those that are a little bit timid, the first time I tried Twitter and I had followed two or three people and I was frustrated because all this weird stuff came coming, coming into my feed, you know, Kardashian stuff and politics and all this other stuff that I wasn't looking for. I was looking for teaching ideas, but the more teachers you follow, the more that stuff populates your feed and the other stuff gets weeded out. So just kind of keep that in mind and, and who you should follow. 
Um, if you are following any of us, I think our Twitter handles are somewhere on those, those flyers that we pass out. But also the link in the, um, in the newsletter right next to our pictures, our little emojis, there's a little tiny T for Twitter, you can go there. And then see people who we follow and if the people that we follow, look at their, pay, their profile page. See if they, if they teach math and you're a social studies teacher and you're not really interested, find, you can find somebody else or maybe they do have some good ideas you can use anyway and just follow them for a while and, and see if they've got something that might benefit you and your students. And you'll find something on any platform. Don't think it has to be Twitter. If you're a Facebook user, use Facebook. Instagram. Instagram, use Instagram, Snapchat. Get little 20 second snippets of what's going on in other classrooms. It's not YouTube. one app, YouTube, you name it, it's out there. It's just a matter of, of how willing you are to go find it. Yeah, other people's podcasts. Yeah, there you go. Web pages, Absolutely. blogs, you name it, sky's yeah. the limit. I love but we're going to be running out of time. Speaking of sky's not the limit. Uh, so let's I bring get it into this. We are pushing hard right now towards the end of the school year. We still got testing to go. Luckily, we have a little spring break beforehand. And we want to talk about ways that you can get rid of those doldrums, the way things are going, the tiredness. Uh, Jerry, I think you might have a couple ideas. I got a brain tip. And brain research shows us that novelty is good for students and teachers. Change it up. Do something a little different. Call us for ideas if you're not sure. And also take a few minutes with your students to just be mindful. You know, YouTube has things, Class Dojo, Headspace for educators is free. To just sit still for a minute and, and let students and yourself process and relax just a bit. Well, guys, you have anything else good for the order? If we don't talk to you before spring break, have a great spring break. Um, I know for us, it kind of ramps up from there because we have Q going to spring break and then it's, you know, the, the end of the year. So hang in there. Um, we'll see you a little bit after spring break, probably. Yeah. I have, Q, I have Q a is where we go and get a lot of new ideas and, and we get to come back and share them with you. Yeah. Get our brains uh, picked after we go there because there'll be a lot. And in the meanwhile, my, my recommendation is just breathe. Just breathe. Just breathe. Namaste. Well, with that's the case, I'd like you to remember that you are not who you were. You are working on who you will be. Uh, have a great rest of February, and God willing, we'll see you all again in March. <laughs>